Go like this. You got anything on you, man? No. Stop running! Holy shit! Oh, go! Go, young nigga! Go! I thought he was talking to. Yo, what it do? Boy, Buck Breeze. Mr. No Slacking himself. No Slacking him. Balls. Bad for your health. Yo, check this out, man. Yo, my man sent me this. He said, yo, jump into this, man. I mean, this is a dope one right here. You know what I mean? He says, when cops try to arrest real gangsters. So, hey, let's see what's really good with it. All right, let's check it in. You know what I'm saying, let's check in with it. All right, let's tap in. Let's see what's good. You no know, time is money, man. We can't get a dollar back. So we're going to jump right into this, man. See what's good. Let's to go. arrest all sorts of criminals, from complete beginners to wannabe thugs. But what happens when the person they have to arrest Cops have to arrest all sorts of criminals, from complete beginners to wannabe thugs. But what happens when the person they have to arrest is actually a real gangster? Oh shit, it's showing some, uh, it's showing some videos of their reactions on. <laughs> I seen that video, I did a reaction on that when a dude jumped out the car bucking at the cop. Here are four times seasoned criminals tried to outplay oh. cops during their arrest. Starting with this crime duo, who have outran the police more than once and are still doing so till this day. On July 29, 2023, officers from the Cleveland Police Department pulled up to a small gas station. The reason? They were looking for these two. Ready? Uh, we trapped together and that's my brother. Uh. Where you going, bud? Come here. These two been doing dirt together for a minute or something, huh? Come here. What? Come here. The two unnamed suspects had just fled from a traffic stop with no intention of talking to the police. Stop walking away. Stop walking away. Hands Run out your you pocket. Hey. Look at this boy. His boy trying to help him like, yo, what? Wait, what you want with him, man? What you want with him? And he keep talking to him. <laughs> Hands out your pocket. Five, zero, nine, two. Go like this. You got anything on you, man? No. Oh. Stop running. Oh, shit. Oh, go. Go, young nigga. Go. I thought he was talking to the dude in the black. Nah, he was talking to him. He just dipped on his ass. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cop better lay off them donuts, man. Look how far ahead he is on his ass. Now, this officer is being led on an intense foot chase through the neighborhood nearby. But no matter how hard he tries, the suspect is just a bit too fast for him to keep up with. Running towards 114. Definitely was too fast. White t-shirt. Red shorts. He's running north on 113 from Regalia. He's running east on Kinsman. Meanwhile, his partner is up ahead, closing the gap between him and the suspect. And it seems like he's got a decent shot at catching up. I don't think he got a decent shot, y'all. What y'all think? What y'all think? Uh, don't look like a decent shot to me. He's out on him. This little nigga must play football or something. ran track or something because this little ass ain't retired he's still running it looked like he got a stratty in his hand actually but he don't he must got his hands like this because he out on him he ghost what's that shit we say back in the day audi 5000 on a nigga <laughs> yeah as the chase leads him to the main road a getaway vehicle starts flying towards them knowing that this was the my boy had a getaway vehicle meet him Make or break moment. The cop grabs onto oh. the suspect as he hops in the car. Oh. Trying to get picked up right now. See, this is some bullshit right there. This is how cops take their jobs too serious and they get hurt. And then what happened is they blame the suspect they was chasing. No. Nobody told you to hold on to a person that's inside of a moving car. The hell's wrong with you, dude? They gone. Despite his best attempts at hanging on, there's a Yo, he was holding dude face and anything like that. Only so far you can get dragged. Oh, I did a reaction to that video too. I did a reaction to this video right here by a speeding vehicle so the officer had to let go not just of the suspect but at the idea of arresting these two criminals but while these two may have taken the usual approach of running away from the cops oh, there are other criminals who have their own special strategies like this prison escapee who got away from the 
Let's get into it, yeah. The police using nothing but his own words. I promise you, I'm not. Wait, Vanessa. No damn person escaping. You'd have done run by now. On April 5th, 2006, Richard Lee McNair put his lying skills to the test after he was confronted by this police officer by a railway track in Pollock, Louisiana. The police officer was currently on the lookout for a prisoner that had just escaped the United States Penitentiary nearby, and he actually found him, but he just didn't know it yet. You live around here, buddy? No. Where you live at? Down the road by uh, Pineville. Pineville? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form identification on you? No, man. What's, What's your name? name? Robert Jones. Robert Jones? Uh-huh. Why I'm not supposed to be on the track? I don't have an address. I'm at the hotel. We're working on uh, houses and stuff. I got the roofing. That was a good little fast lie, but he fucked up already because he said he lived down the road. Roofing? Yep. Okay. For my brother. What is? We got an escapee. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where from? Uh, prison. There's a prison here? Yeah. Man, it is hot. Just a few seconds of conversation was all it took for the officer to second guess Richard's identity. So he starts making a few calls to try and get more information. Hey, this call. Subject wore glasses? Nothing about glasses. Can you find out? I'm out with a white male on the tracks at uh, Gilly Williams. After verifying a few things, it seems like the description of the escapee and Richard, or Robert as he was calling himself, doesn't match up. And slowly but surely, the cop starts to lose his suspicions. Hello. Wow. Wow. Hey, listen, man. If you can finesse your game, you gotta finesse your game. Like, he did his finesse thing right here, it seemed like. What's that picture? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I got the same thing. You can't see shit on it. I guarantee I'm not. No you know the bad thing about it? What's that? You'll match it up to him. Come on. <laughs> well, that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. Throughout all of this, notice Richard's body language. He's swinging his arms around, taking swigs of his water, and walking side to side. Those are all actions that a jogger would be doing, which makes his words all the more believable. But the officer isn't full. Okay, okay, okay. But. Why didn't he just have a picture of the escapee and put the picture up to his face? Isn't that like what they pulls a hat? Fully sold yet, so he keeps asking Richard questions. But like the master manipulator he is, he's able to fake a backstory on the spot. What are you saying at? That uh, Titus Bill or Titus Ham? Titus Ham? A little old. A little old. Uh, Where's that at? I don't even know the address. We just got into town about a week ago, and he dropped me off to jog. I always jog about 12 miles a day. Where'd he drop you off at? Up there on that road by, uh, there's some construction going on up there, and out. Uh, and he dropped me off, and uh, he'll be back to the hotel in about probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Who y'all work for? It's his, it's his, uh... I know, what's the name Brooklyn of the company? company? Phil's Brooklyn. Okay. Where are you from? Well... Now, if the cop know anything, he should know he was lying right there. When he asked him who he worked for, see how he got to look it down and shit like that and all that? Yeah, that's something you can tell him smiling lying right there. Huh? We're originally <laughs> Dallas, Texas. I mean, that's where y'all yeah, stay where at, we're out, of. out of Dallas, Texas. And he's so good at lying that even when he slipped up and told the officer a different name, the cop still didn't notice. So what's your name again? Jimmy Jones. Throughout this conversation, Richard is building his trust with the officer by laughing at his jokes, making relevant commentary. And That's crazy. So basically, this, this cop probably got fired, huh? And most importantly, not showing a single ounce of fear. This confidence is what makes the officer doubt himself over and over again and keeps Richard off the hook for the small mistakes he makes in his lies. Put yourself in my position. Well, yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not you throwing you against her. Hey, you wouldn't believe what them guys do. I mean, they got years and years to think about how they're going to do it. Now, I could, uh, when I crossed the tracks down there, I saw you running. I said, well, how lucky can I be? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not no prison escapee. Richard knows exactly how much detail to give in his story. He's descriptive enough so that it sounds real, but not too detailed to avoid suspicion. Where's y'all's motel at? Okay. Yeah, the cop should have been really suspicious. Like, anyway, he said he seen him running. 
he said, oh, damn, well, how lucky am I? Like, you know what I mean? I just happened to catch the dude. He kind of just should have been suspicious anyway. Let me think now, because like I say, because who the fuck else around here is running and jogging? Do you see people jogging around here normally? Because if you don't, then that should have probably made you think about that. So uh, fuel always drives. Okay, Walmart's right there. Go right at Walmart, and there's a road. That, is it 165? Right. 165 that goes south, and we're about two blocks. Little, little tiny hotel. Yeah, you know, like a motel deal part up there. And there's uh. At least he knew that. He played that shit right. He must have did a little, uh, little research on the area or something. Uh, we, we've got a camper, and we were trying to get into the camper place, but we didn't get into the camper place. Yet. There's a camper place between, I think, Ball, I mean, not Ball, uh, Pine Deal. I promise you, I'm not no damn serious in this case. Baby. You'd have done run by now. <laughs> you know that yourself. <laughs> You'd have done run by now. So basically, the cop was waiting for him to take off running out of nowhere because, you know, his story and whatever, whatever, a little bit. So it was like, fuck it, I'm about to just take off. But nah, B, that's how you're supposed to stay cool. If you finesse and you stay cool. By this point, the officer was already convinced, meaning Richard was about to be let go scot-free. I'm sorry to have to hold you up. But... Hey, no, I'm just doing my job, man. I know you are. Be careful, you'll probably get stopped again, okay? Yeah. Don't, don't. Be alarmed by it. Border, border, border. Border line, yeah. Okay, and you'll be on till well, this shift. I'll be on till we find this on the gun. Well, my dad's an auxiliary detective. In Where Dallas, at? In Dallas. They oh, okay. The possum is what they call it. Yeah. He's 70 years old and he's been doing it since 63. Still he's enjoys Dallas, it. Man. Yeah. After this encounter, Richard was added to the U.S. Marshal's 15 most wanted list, seeing as. He played that shit. Dopely, that's what you call a finesse gang, huh? How he had just done the first successful prison escape since 1991. Richard managed to evade the- That cop probably got his ass fired. Pension going anything. The police for months hiding out in Canada before finally getting captured in October 2007. But not all pro criminals get away. Even the best of the best can get caught if they aren't careful. Like this notorious MS-13 gang leader who's in- Okay. MS-13 game member, let's get it, y'all. Entire criminal empire crumbled just because of a routine traffic stop. Let's have a seat right here, okay? On June 7, 2023, a state trooper in Ohio pulled over this gray car for tailgating. To him, this was just a routine traffic stop. But what he would soon find out was that this was much more than that. Boy, it was probably tailgating that product. You know what I'm saying? You happen to pull over the motherfucking tailgate car instead of the product car, which had the boss in it, probably. Five, Colorado, Boy Henry Union, Boy Henry. Henry. Truck kept going. The officer approached the car to find three people inside. And while usually in these situations, the focus would be on the driver, this time the passenger was the real person of interest. That's because the passenger was the motherfucking boss, as you can see. That's, see, that's definitely the boss. Like, if you know situations, I'm kind of good at knowing situations and shit. Like, I've been through a lot of them, but we can kind of tell, you know, that's the boss sitting there. Into it. Hello, how you doing? You got your license on you? Got your ID on you? So my man just sitting there nice and comfortable. You know what I'm saying? He's sitting there comfortable, chilling. He had a little smirk on his face for a quick second if he peeped it. You know what I'm saying? How you doing? Hey, doing all right? Yeah. Is this a rental car? Yes. Okay, did you rent it? I rent it. Okay, do you have the rental agreement on you? Look at him, look at him, look at him. He like, man, come on, cop. Let's go, man. You know what I'm saying? Anything all good over here, baby. <laughs> you gotta recognize it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Does he not speak any English? Okay. Well, the reason I got him stopped is because he's falling too close. I'm not gonna issue him a citation. It's just gonna be a warning. That's because this wasn't just any other person. This was Eden Nilsson Velasquez Lauren, the alleged gang leader for the infamous Lamara Salvatrucha gang, AKA MS-13. But he didn't know that yet. First, he needed to get through the standard questioning. Gotta have it back in Denver. I'm sorry? Gotta have it back in yes. Denver. Yes. Gotcha, on the 13th. 
Did they get snitched on? Did somebody tell that, you know, the leader was going to be riding this car? Because how the hell did we get, end up figuring this out? Hey, right, come on, let's get into it. Yes. Gotcha. Where are you guys heading to? To New York. Gotcha. What takes you to New York? Oh, that's where you're from. Yeah. What took you to Colorado? Work. Oh, okay. Better pay. Oh, okay. Who you work it's, for? Uh, you driving from Colorado to New York? Sheesh. Air logistics. What is it? Uh, it's Amazon delivery. Oh, okay. I saw it said Amazon on it. So they probably just snuck that nigga back in from Mexico or something crazy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So how long are you staying in New York for? This is when things started to see how she did for him. Um, hmm, like I said, he probably just my boy probably been getting snuck in and out. You know what I'm he probably could make a couple moves out there, you know what I mean? To fall apart because these three did not prepare ahead of time, and the truth was just moments away from being exposed. Is he here on papers? Uh, who? Does he have papers? I'll be here. Like a work visa or? No. Okay. Yep. Thank you. El Salvador, El Salvador. Okay, gotcha. All right. All right. I'm not gonna issue a citation or anything like that. All right. I'm just gonna run your information. Make sure there's no wants and warrants. Make sure you guys are loud. Get you out of here. Okay. The cop then returns with a border patrol officer because after running their documents in the system, things were not checking out. Which boy act like he understand no English. He just sitting there is like <laughs> only meant one thing. This agent wants to speak to you. He's gonna have you step out, okay? That's never a good thing when they want to speak to you and want you to step out. I'll have you come out here real quick. See, he wasn't smiling now. He looked at mad as hell, like shit. Any weapons on you or anything? No, Crystal laser? No, okay. not nothing. Can I cut you down real quick? I'll check your waistband here real quick. No, they ain't got no weapons, man. It's the motherfucking boss, nigga. Take your phone out right here, okay? Uh -huh. You can put it right there. Alright, come back here for me. Okay. okay. I'm just gonna put you back here for just a second, okay? okay. Just one, one momento. No problem. Alright. Okay. Let's have a seat right here, okay? Okay. Damn, what kind of uncomfortable ass cop car, ugly ass, one seater ass seat is that? That's some bullshit right there. Damn, you ain't even next to the nigga that they put another side of you. That's crazy. Maybe I ain't having my enough experience. I had enough experience. Maybe I, I'm good far away from cop cars. I ain't know that that's how they are now. Because I had no idea it was like that. That shit is a one seater right there. Other side, you cut off from the person. Others, that's a little ass seat too. Oh lord, keep me away from all police activity. <laughs> they probably got a dog on the other side type shit. Eden Nilsson's true identity was soon revealed, and he was locked up on charges of ordering murders, drug distribution, and all because of a tailgating traffic stop. But even though this crime lord went with the officers peacefully, that doesn't mean. <laughs> Joe, that dude that was a driver, the boss about to get his ass whacked. You already know because he messed up. Yeah, he gonna pay a price for that. That other criminals do the same. In fact, there are some that will do almost anything to try and escape, even if that means throwing a friend under the bus. You can look right over and you'll see him. Drop him! Woo! Yeah. Drop him! Yeah. Let him go! On March 29, 2023, the Albuquerque police got a call about a disturbance. Albuquerque? And that's in Mexico, ain't it? at the 4700 block of Glendale Road Northwest. The reasoning? Gunshots. The suspect was 32-year-old Francisco Macias, who after getting high on narcotic, reportedly started assaulting his family members and firing his gun out. Francisco, you spoke of that shit? Oh, hell nah. Get Francisco the hell up out of here. Fr Auntie, Francisco spoke of that shit again. That's this fool dude. Kick Francisco ass, man. Side. That means when officers arrived on scene, they were more than prepared for a violent situation. Drop the gun! Drop 
Francisco bugging the fuck out. As the cops get closer, the situation only gets more dire, and soon there's a foot chase happening, but it doesn't go on for long. I bet it don't. It probably shot his ass. Shots is already ringing out. Look at the gun that this cop is running with right in front of our face. Like, damn. Drop the cops need to learn that all of them screaming stuff at somebody at one time don't never help. Like, maybe, like, you should have a designated person that does the screaming and the cussing. Because it seems like they all are doing the same. Get a fuck where you fuck, you motherfucking fuck. By the time you fucking figure out what they're saying, they're gonna shot your ass. Like, that's not cool. What the fucking gun? Hard, hard. Oh, he hauling ass. In the backyard. Over the fence and running southbound. You want me to stay with the guy in the... Francisco soon. You got the bird on you. The ghetto bird ain't no getting away, man. He realizes there's nowhere left to run and that his friends are not on his side. Because not only does he have to worry about the cops, his friends are also a problem. So he decides to use one of them as a human meat shield. Uh, and we're checking on every guy to see if they have any, uh, any victims. Okay, he's confronting a guy, the neighbor, in the backyard. Neighbor's lying on the ground. He's standing over him at this time. I think Francisco, Francisco was smoking some of that Mexico's PCP or some shit. That shit got his ass tripping right now. Once you get to that wall, you can look right over and you'll see him. When officers finally get in close contact with the suspect, they deploy less lethal methods before eventually using the stun gun. He got lucky his ass was the United States. They would have shot his ass. What is he doing to the person? Like, what's going on here, Francisco? Like, what are you trying to do? Francisco, what's going on here, man? It's, yo, man. It's just giving real ditty, Francisco. What's going on, man? Yo, you see the way he fell when they hit him with the taser? That boy body went weak. Damn, Francisco. When officers finally get in close contact with the suspect, they deploy less le Why you don't do shit like this, man? Cause this shit out of your ass. Drunk up somewhere. I be mean, looking real crazy. Try to tell you it's your boy, man, Buck Breeze. This is no slacking himself. No slacking involved. Bad for your health. Lethal methods before eventually using the stun gun. He deserved that. I don't know what Francisco was trying to do to that little old man, but he deserved that. Help me! Please help me! Francisco was brought down to the station and eventually jailed, but he didn't end up staying as he was released shortly after all the charges against him were dropped.